Good evening, I'm Tom McNamara. At the top tonight on Eyewitness News 4 Investigators Special Report, here's Christy Tedesco. Tom, about 12 miles from the prison in Florence, there is a monastery in Arizona, a mysterious Greek Orthodox monastery called St. Anthony's. For the last eight months, the Eyewitness News 4 Investigators have been looking into questions over the monastery's money and allegations that the monastery is tearing families apart. Tonight, wearing the required clothing, we take you inside this monastery mystery. It's all very surreal at St. Anthony's Monastery in Florence. On the 106 acres of land, around 50 monks do their daily chores, duties they're assigned under their spiritual leader, Father Ephraim. Ephraim is a man who remains much a mystery, refusing our request for an interview, but we were allowed inside the monastery. We were instructed to keep away from the monks and to follow our guide for the day, Father Anthony. Hello, from the two other doors we have Archangel uh, Gabriel on this side and Archangel Michael on the north. Uh, there are parents across the country who say the monastery has control over their children. The grounds are open to the public, but the parents believe the monastery is a mental prison. And several of them paid their way to Tucson to try and explain this to the investigators. The mothers and fathers of Scott Nevins, Nico Pantanazopoulos, and Paul Alec. I sort of remained in the church trying to work within the church to maybe get my son out or that he would somehow see the light and the church has been reluctant to move in. We know there are many more out there who are afraid to come forward, many more. What are they doing for these families? The parents say they are most discouraged by the personal account of a former student at St. Anthony's Monastery. David Smith says he, at one time, was brainwashed. When you're in it, for, you know, it just seems very normal. It's, you're slow cook, basically. You know, they, they teach it to you slowly. They introduce you to one thing at a time. And it just sort of builds, you know, over time. In these chapels, he says, they teach young people to disconnect from their families. He says there's anti-government rhetoric. And he says there's a mystery over money. A mystery many have asked the investigators to reveal. How much money was spent building the monastery in Florence? A few thousand dollars. How much? A few thousand, I don't know how many. A few thousand? Wouldn't she say closer to a million? Probably. We took a two and a half hour tour and found elaborate landscaping, hand carved altars, high dollar artwork. A licensed custom home contractor also walked the grounds. His rough estimate put the monastery's value at about 13 million dollars, excluding the land. The church is probably your in the neighborhood of five to six million outbuildings which i call the um dormitories the the kitchen and those areas were probably another five to six million and then you're probably in the category of the uh, landscaping which is easily a million dollars and that's just one monastery father Ephraim has another monastery southeast of tucson 481 acres his followers say he wants to have a hundred monasteries in the united states everyone wants to know where is he getting the money? Where's the money coming from? Overseas? Within the United States? Where is this coming from? From the United States, from people, from believers. I don't know from where. Take a look at this map. Ephraim has at least 18 monasteries so far, all built along the outer portions of the United States in the last 17 years. Father Anthony will only say they are built on anonymous donations and mortgages. How much do you grow up? How much do you own? I don't know exactly. Religious experts say they're skeptical about what they see as financial secrecy. If you look at a person like Billy Graham, uh, where he is, his reputation of, for integrity is absolutely sterling, there's full open and public disclosure of his funds. And we should expect no less than from the Orthodox Church. I feel sorry for those people, really. And do you know something? We never stop praying for those people they have those evil thoughts in their minds. 
On the surface, St. Anthony's Monastery is an intriguing tourist stop. But beyond the four chapels, the citrus orchard, and the expansive living quarters, there is the parents' pain and confusion. At least three families claiming they've been torn apart, calling for an investigation for the archdiocese to get involved. Let's get this above the board, out in the open, into the light, so we can all know. It's if it's clean, it's clean. If it's not, it's not. Then we know. But religious experts say it would need to be an open investigation. I would encourage the bishop to be the bishop and to uh, stand up for the gospel at all costs. And if necessary, if they refuse to follow the gospel, then do his episcopal duty and excommunicate them. Now, we have been contacted by hundreds of supporters of the monastery who say all of the claims are false and that their children are happy in the monasteries. And we also got an email statement from the Archdiocese. While it doesn't address our question about the money, it does deny that St. Anthony's Monastery uses anti-Semitic innuendo in any of its teachings. According to the Chancellor, the Metropolitan of San Francisco has made visits to the monastery to meet with their leadership and the monastics and has met with some of their parents. He says, we have not found evidence of anti-Semitism in practice at any of our monastic communities or parishes. The Archdiocese also says it will continue to seek out the truth and will enforce the right of any monastic or novice to leave their monastery if that's their choice.